In today's show, following your AFL dream, wherever it takes you. And Matthew Nix answers the question every fan is asking. Hi, I'm Mark Bickley and welcome to the Optus Crows Show as we count down to the clash with the Eagles. But first, a young Crows player's journey of cultural discovery is the theme of this year's Indigenous Guernsey. The design is the creation of Ben Davis and depicts headdress worn in his ancestral home, the Torres Strait Islands. The Guernsey will be worn in the Sir Doug Nichols Round 12 game against Collingwood. Ben says it's another step in his quest to know more about his family's history. For me, you know, a bit of a different case having not grown up around my culture and um, not having sort of a, a elder to teach me um, about my culture was um, very weird, um, especially being around Indigenous programs and that it, I always felt a bit um, sort of out of it. To have the opportunity to cre create this jersey um, for the club helped kickstart my you know, me diving into my culture and learning more about it. That's the meaning that it has to me, sort of finding more about myself and what makes me me. Having not done like a jersey or anything before, that was a thing that was sort of rattling around in my brain for a while. Um, where do I start? Eventually we got to the, the headdress in the middle, which I was like, you know, we'll start from the centre and work our way out. And it represents Torres Strait Islander. It's the most obvious thing um, you see on the flag and things. It's um, worn in ceremony, so for dancing and stuff, and it was also worn um, during times of war. We've got the the rope on the inside of it um, actually also represents Adelaide Oval and then the crow's foot in the middle representing all the players and um, the legacy they have at this club. Hammerhead sharks swimming up on the bottom of the jersey of the design. The hammerhead sharks are my family totem and one of the things that that represents in Indigenous culture is sort of law and order. The fish uh, swimming in towards Adelaide Oval. Originally I had the bigger fish uh, leading the way to um, the middle of the the jersey but then I thought about the age demographic we have. All these senior players helping push the younger players and um, really drive the standards and leadership. The spears here represent uh, the staff as well um, so they're obviously they're going along with the fish helping guide us towards that one goal of success. Ropes here uh, represent the, each Indigenous player and their strength to culture by being tied to the headdress and then the spears here which wrap around the back uh, represent you know readiness for battle. I love how it turned out, it's an amazing process to go through and um, you know it's, it's really special to finish the drawing and have it on paper but to actually see it in a jersey and to see the other Indigenous boys wearing it for the first time for the photo shoot that we did, um, that's when it really hit me like how sort of proud I was of how it turned out. The Guernsey can be bought from Chromania, shop.afc.com.au, in-store at Westlakes or on game day at Adelaide Oval. Now, Jackson Haightley's cross-border AFL road has finally brought him to what he hopes will be his football home. Born in Canberra, Jackson came to Adelaide with his family when he was two, but he had to move to Sydney after being drafted by the Giants. Limited to just 13 games with GWS, he looked for more opportunities and joined the Crows last year. I think any time you can be close to the family, that's obviously going to be a great move and that's what I found coming back. I've, I've loved that aspect of it. But then also the, the club um, was a big reason why I wanted to come as well and such a young group and to be able to develop with this group and hopefully have some success going forward is, is a massive driver for me and what's, what's driving me going forward. So that was a big factor. So he was a senior assistant at the Giants and um, in charge of the, the club's ball movement and you know, straight away I knew that you know, he was going to be a good senior coach and knew that the Giants probably wouldn't have him for long. Um, and so when he, when he got the Crows gear I sort of kept an eye on that and um, yeah we, we spoke a little bit um, in the lead up to the move um, and you know I, I just had such respect for him as, as a coach and as a person that it definitely made the move um, a bit easier. It was an honour to be presented by Ian and um, yeah it was a special, special day, something I remember for forever, um, debuting in Tassie. Unfortunately we couldn't get the result but um, you know we played some good footy that day and probably just let ourselves down in that, that last half but 
yeah, it was, it was no doubt a special memory and one that I'll, I'll hold on to. It, it might take a, a bit of time, um, but just to, to be patient and, you know, I'm here for a reason and I'm gonna, gonna help the club out. So just, um, you know, bring the things I'm good at and yeah, I'm just gonna keep learning, keep getting better. Stay with us after the break. The two veterans showing the young guys how it's done. Welcome back. A wretched run with injuries delayed Andrew McPherson's AFL debut by two years. His breakthrough came in round six last season and solid performances for the rest of the year earned him the Mark Pickley Emerging Talent Award. In this segment delivered by Thomas Farms, Brody Smith helps us get to know a little more about the 21 year old. This week we're joined by Andy McPherson. Moose, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Smith. Your background of footy out of the Eagles factory, but um, I guess you're an SA boy, obviously, so you're, you're junior footy coming into the club. As a junior, it was Port District, so around the corner from home. Um, grew up playing a lot of my footy there, and then actually Port Magpies for a bit before they their juniors disbanded, and, and then over to the Mighty Eagles. For a few Always years. hated Port Districts growing up. <laughs> good club, mate, good club. The thing you've enjoyed the most about um, AFL footy and, and the club, and probably the hardest thing, give us the, the two there. Yeah, probably the thing I've enjoyed most is just been um, connecting with the young group of boys, especially at the moment, and, and being able to play some good footy and win some win some games as a club. Um, it's been really exciting, and obviously a highlight of that would be round one this year. And the hardest thing, probably just a bit of injury that I've had along the way. And I'm pretty sure you haven't kicked a goal yet, have you? Yet to kick one. Nah, so we're looking forward to the first goal. What, talk us through how you've pictured the first goal. Gee, playing half back, it's a bit Smith-like, just knocking one over for 50 on the run would be nice. Yeah. But um, yeah, worry about that when we get there, yeah. I think. It'd be nice for me too, it doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Moose. No worries, thank you, mate. Well, outstanding performances this season by senior Sandful players Daniel Jackson and Matt Wright are proof you can't beat experience. They provide the young Crows with on-field leadership, but 35-year-old Jackson doesn't stop there. He doubles up as the AFL game day runner. We talk to the pair about the team's development and their desire to still pull on the boots. Get under that. Well, he'll oblige oh. Jackson and he's taken the mark. I'd been sort of helping out in training, just dropping in as an extra number here or there. And then there was a pre-season game against Woodville where I think we had one AFL listed midfielder. And it might have been, I think it was a little jibe from yourself. Around. It'd be handy to have you out there, Jacko. I said, oh yeah, I could. Jokingly said I could, I could offer my services. And all of a sudden I'm standing out on Theberton on a 32 degree day after six years on the sidelines. For me, I, I still want to play footy at a very high level. Um, and to come back and be able to do that in the sample, which I started in as well, which is kind of cool. Um, but then dip my toes into coaching as well. Um, marries up pretty well. Chance now for Matty Wright. The skipper drops the kick in. Kick. Former Richmond best and fairest who's come out of retirement from 40 on a 45 degree angle. And he's done it. My motivation was that we had such a young group and I I did, don't think I had an appreciation for the the, hot, the the level of quality of players in the SANFL. So that was my motivation, if I can help the team. But I've actually selfishly really, really enjoyed it. You know, I retired at 28 and I said I'm never going to play again. I'd had enough of the game. But I come back now with just this fresh perspective on how much fun. Footy's a game. New church over the top to right. Right can run in and kick the goal for the Crows. For me to help these guys play their best footy and potentially play AFL footy, which, which is why we're sort of both here, um, I have to keep myself in reasonable nick. Um, am I in the nick that I probably was when I was playing in AFL? Absolutely not. Righty plays a very clever brand of football. Never mans up, never chases, has 35, <laughs> kicks kicks a few every week. <laughs> Is that how it goes? Pretty much. And I play every second week. So in the end, our work rate probably evens out. Yeah, well, you still probably got me covered, to be honest. But I don't know about that. Daniel played his last AFL game seven years ago but I still think he'd get a few kicks out there today. Still to come on The Crow Show, birthday presents don't come much better than this.
Every Crows player has great memories of past glories, but there can be few better moments than when you kick the winning goal after the siren. Thanks to Optus, Sam Jacobs caught up with Rod Jamison to recall the day back in round 12, 1991, when Jamo said yes after slotting the goal on, of all days, his 21st birthday. Hello Crows fans, I'm here with current board member, life member of the footy club, Rod Jamison. Jamo, thanks for joining us. Pleasure, Source. Uh, the moment it started with yes for you was on your 21st birthday um, out on Amy Stadium. Talk us through, I guess, what happened that night. It was the 9th of June 1991 was the time where we could actually have a Saturday and Sunday or Sunday off. So I planned it, 80 people, quite intimate show, and then... Um... The siren has gone, the siren has gone. This kick, if it's a goal, will win the match for the Crows from 47 metres. It'll make the distance. Oh, he's Yeah, as it unfolded, I was lucky enough to kick a goal and uh, 240 turned up, six Fitzroy players turned up and got home at 10 o'clock the next day. Now, was that free kick actually yours? Totally. It was? Oh, yeah. It was? Yeah, I think uh, Eddie tried to steal it. <laughs> now, mate, obviously the, the highlight of your career is the Premiership, no doubt. Um, obviously such a such a special moment in your life and, you know, being able to do that is obviously, you know, every kid's dream. Yeah, look, it really was. It was, um, you know, with... I guess the showdown imminent, it was one where we lost that showdown and we'd won one, lost three. Yeah. Malcolm Blight wrote the number 18 on the on the board as yeah. we walked in, didn't really say much and you know, post that game we actually sort of played pretty well and rallied and uh, we had a big final series and made it to the big day and, yeah. and we're pretty successful. Now, I guess, how was your, I guess, your range of emotions? Because, you know, obviously, you want to get to the grand final, play well, and obviously, you know, I'm you got injured early, which yep. made it must have been tough watching the game um, sitting on the bench. Yeah, it was it was one where it's just if you reflect now, like Jason Heatley, I was standing for St yep. Kilda really fast off the off the mark. He was having a great year as well. Yeah, and I was a couple of metres behind. I tried to get there and overstretched, and yep. in the end, I tore my muscle off the bone, so almost like a stress fracture. Yeah, and. Um, Tried to get back out there, but just couldn't do it. I, I guess it was disappointing not to run out the game, but it was great to obviously for the result. Well, Jamo, thanks very much for joining me, mate. Thanks for sharing your moment, start of the yes, and uh, fantastic to have you back here. Pleasure, Source. Thank you. Cheers. Since 2008, Toyota has helped thousands of grassroots footy clubs raise over $7 million with the Toyota Good for Footy raffle. Clubs keep 100% of the proceeds and can use those funds for a number of upgrades around their club, from new Guernseys and balls to new facilities and coaches. With three brand new Toyotas up for grabs, clubs and supporters have a chance to win some amazing prizes as well. Clubs can sign up to participate at toyota.com.au. Let's check in with Gazer Footy Club on their success with the Toyota Good for Footy raffle and what that has meant for their club. My name is Natasha Jenke, I am uh, the club secretary for Gazer and I'm also involved in the junior football program, team managing um, some of the junior teams. My name's Bonnie Felsberg and I am the A-grade senior women's captain. So the club's very important to the community around this area. Um, it brings a diverse range of people here. We, you know, we get the really young kids coming through, you know, three, four and five. And you get, you know, even with the women's team, we have up to 43 year olds playing. So I wouldn't have met the people I've met today without coming to Gaza. My name's Bryce Denham, uh, A-grade footballer for Gazer. The club is so important to our community because a bunch of us lads just love getting together Tuesday, Thursday night. Just, uh, we all got the same goal at the end of the day and that's to win games of footy and we all have our hard days at work and all that so getting together and having a laugh and kicking the footy around is just important to us. For the Toyota Good for Footy raffle we were lucky enough to raise $8,000 for our community. So it was promotional through the club itself on Facebook, we um, hit up our members by email Email, we spoke about it, we encouraged it, it was something that we were you know, really driven to help get us through a, a really tough time. We've upgraded some of the facilities of our club rooms, new sets of Guernseys for all of our juniors um, and Guernseys for our senior program and equipment for, for across all sporting grades. Support your club and buy a $5 raffle ticket. Search Toyota Good for Footy Raffle. 
Okay, we're nearly nine games into the season, and after the break, the big question for Matthew Nix. And every fan wants to know the answer. As I mentioned earlier, all players have their own special Crows memory. But this year, with the help of the club's social media, we've asked members to recall their favourite moments. For Heather, it was 20 years ago when she went to Melbourne for her 30th birthday and saw Adelaide take on Richmond. Thanks to Bendigo Bank, we'll let Heather tell her story. He finds it, Burton on his own, wonderful play, Johnson, another one. So my name's Heather Lockett and I've been a Crows member since the beginning. When I was 30, which is going to be 20 years ago this year, my husband organised a special weekend and we went to Melbourne and we saw the Crows play Richmond at the MCG. McLeod, surely this time, he wants a high mark. Burn a huge club. I mean, we loved Adelaide Oval, we love Footy Park, but the MCG is huge and the noise, it's like a cauldron. So it's just amazing. And you're just really proud of your players because we don't get to play there very often. So when they can pull off a win like that, it was pretty phenomenal. He gets the 50, he loads it up. We've been to Melbourne a few times with our kids. We have three boys and we used to often take them over for big games. But for the Crows to win on a Friday night at the G, it was pretty special. And against Richmond, who were always such a big club. It was just a fantastic weekend. The back. Oh, this is stuff. Well, after the game, we met some of the players and Doc Clark was one of them, which was really cool and a big highlight for me. I think he's just, he just seems normal and down to earth. The girls obviously love him and he's been here for a really long time. And I think if you can last through everything that's happened, you must be a pretty good bloke. We asked for directions because we got off the train at the MCG and everybody was going the opposite direction to the lights. So we asked and this nice guy said, oh yeah, they've shut the road, you have to go this way. Come and have a drink at the Richmond pub. So we there with all our Crows gear on, but off we went. Swapped phone numbers and email addresses, became lifelong friends. So we now have a trophy with them. So it's the Lockett Robinson Trophy. And it's whoever's lower. So for years, we never had it because the Crows were always finishing above Richmond. But unfortunately, we've had it for a while now. It was a surprise weekend for me for my 30th. Most people are like, oh, what, what are you getting, jewellery or clothes? And I'm like, no, we're going to Melbourne for the footy. So I loved it. But yeah, to meet Peter um, at that game was fantastic. Our kids have grown up with their kids. They've just become grandparents like us. So we've sort of gone through lots of different life milestones with them. And it's very special. The night ended with a 28-point win over the Tigers. Now, it's time to find our Toyota Crow in the crowd. Looking, looking, let's settle on you. If you recognise yourself, email faceinthecrowd at afc.com.au with photo ID to claim your prize. And you're certainly in luck. Two tickets to Toyota's exclusive Hilux Hill Unbreakable Zone at Adelaide Oval. Terms and conditions apply, so check out our website for details. We all recognise the Crows are in a rebuilding phase. Some weeks, nearly half the team have played fewer than 20 games. Well, this year, Matthew Nix has agreed to answer fans' questions. And today, Matt wants to know how long the coach thinks it'll take for the team to play at the level he has in mind. Uh, look, Matt, from uh, playing at the level point of view, we've still got a lot of things we want to work on. Um, but look, from a baseline, we, we saw the level we'd like to get to, uh, obviously with even more improvement and be able to challenge the, the sides that are battling for top four. Uh, our last round last year against Richmond was, was an example of that, where uh, you know we were able to fight with Richmond for three quarters, unfortunately didn't quite have the endurance to go with them in the end. Um, and ultimately they go on to win the premiership uh, for the season. So you know, we show that our best football can match it with the best. Uh, it's just a matter of being able to do that consistently. Um, and I, I believe things turn around really quickly in that space as players develop, uh, get more games under their belt uh, and become more experienced at the AFL level. Young players do take time, but the signs are very positive. Well, that just about wraps up the Optus Crows show. Don't forget to keep an eye on at the Crows Show on Twitter for all the latest news and check out the club's social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. 
Thanks for your company today, and I look forward to joining you again next Saturday at one o'clock on 7. Bye for now.